Hello and welcome to our new video. But technically, it is an old video. Yeah. So uh, we're going to demystify the concept of mobile application. The topics are what is mobile application, convenience of using mobile application, application uh, distribution platform, and the four types of mobile application. Starting with the what is mobile application. Mobile application, simply a software. Application software na gumagana sa mga small devices like cell phone or tablet. Desktop, meron tayong desktop application. Sa mobile, we have mobile application. And that's it. Ang mobile application is madaming pangalan, madaming aliases like web app, online app, iPhone app, Android app, or simply tinatawag natin siyang app. So number two is why mobile application are convenient. Um, number one, your mobile application sits or installed in your mobile devices. And mobile devices tend to be handy, mas madaling gamitin, and mas practical. Let's take this for example. We have online services. We have a bunch of online services like mobile banking, e-commerce, Lazada, Amazon, Shopee. Mas madaling gamitin yung mga app na ito compared dun sa pagpunta natin sa physical store. But of course, there are drawbacks pagdating sa pag-online shopping. Ano, andyan yung pwede kang mamali ng item, kayo mahirap i-return, kung ano na pa. Convenience sa mobile banking. Kasi whenever that you want to check your account balance, mas madali na lang siyang i-check sa phone compared dun sa dating ginagawa natin na pupunta ka dun sa physical ATM or yung machine or sa bank para ma-check mo lang yung balance mo. Safer to use. Let's say for example again, yung pagta-transfer ng pera sa from one bank to another. Dati, kailangan mo pumunta nga sa physical bank. Pwedeng, pwedeng ka ma-hold up, something like that. Compared dun sa paggamit natin, or convenience ng paggamit ng mobile application. Just one click, matatransfer mo na siya from one account to another. Accessing a website. Nowadays, our phone has a browsers. So, kaya niya din gawin yung mga, or kaya niya din search whenever that you have an internet connection. O pwede mo din search yung mga nasa search mo sa computer using your mobile cell phone or mobile application browsers. Not all the time ay gumagamit tayo ng mga online services. Lucky for us, we have an offline application like Miriam Dictionary, your SMS, camera, voice recorder app, calculator, text editor, spreadsheet, PowerPoint presentation, and many more. And there are apps for everything, mostly. From education, industry, military, science, medicine, health, personal, government, job, entertainment. We will not going to enumerate all uh, mobile applications under those uh, categories. Ano, I know you're very smart. Um, alam kung alam nyo nang i-identify yung mga application na yan. Okay, next is what is mobile application distribution platform? Kung ang toothpaste may happy colgate pepsodent ang shampoo may head and shoulder sun silk cream silk ang mobile application distribution platform ay merong google play app gallery app store and many more mobile application distribution platform it is a place where you can download or purchase mobile applications. Or mas kilala natin ito sa tawag na marketplace or app store. The two main categories ng distribution platform is yung tinatawag natin na native and then the third party. For example, ang native, let's say we have Android operating system. Meron siyang sarili or exclusive marketplace na pinagda-downloadan ng mga application which is yung tinatawag natin na Google Play Store. Google Play Store, again, that is example of distribution platform. In iOS, ang ating distribution platform ay App Store. Since exclusive yung marketplace na to, dun sa specific operating system, ang tawag natin sa kanya is 
native distribution platform. Kapag ka sa iba tayo nagda-download, yun yung tinatawag natin na third party. Like fdroid.org, hml5.oms.apps, bmobi.com. Mostly, dito din sa mga third party, dito kayo nakakita ng mga crack or mga uh, full version ng mga application wherein sa mga native distribution platform, usually may bayad. Personally, hindi ko nire-recommend na mag-download kayo ng mga crack dito sa mga third party uh, distribution platform kasi, you know, hindi natin alam kung ano yung mga ginawa pa nila dyan. Baka may mga tweak pa silang ginawa dun sa mga application and then inopen nila sa public para i-download din nyo. And then, possible na they can remote via that application yung mga hardware mo like camera, microphone, and etc. So, another question is, why would you use mobile application coming from third-party distribution platform? So, basically, siguro kapag ka hindi available dun sa may exclusive marketplace ng operating system mo, for example, walang Facebook dun sa may Google Play Store, example lang, pwede kang gumamit ng third-party kapag ka gusto mo mag-install ng Facebook. Lastly, we have types of mobile application. So, hindi lang natin pag-uusapan dito yung mga types of mobile application. Pag-uusapan din natin dito how we will going to develop this kind of mobile apps. Starting with native apps. So, dinedevelop ang mga native apps specifically for specific operating system. Kapag iba-iba ang operating system ng mobile, Iba-iba din ang programming language na ginagamit sa kanya. Let's say for example, we have Android operating system. Ang ginagamit nating programming language dyan, it's either Kotlin or Java. In iOS, it's either Swift or Object-C. And apart from that, different operating system may equal to different integrated development environment or IDE or yung mas kilala natin sa tawag na editor or yung ginagamit natin program kapag ka nagde-develop tayo ng mga application. So for example, sa Android apps, kung gagawa tayo ng Android apps, ang gagamitin natin dyan is Android Studio. Kung magde-develop naman tayo ng iOS, ang gagamitin nating application or IDE is yung Xcode. Unfortunately, you cannot install Xcode sa mga Windows operating system. Unlike Android Studio na po pwede mong i-download at install sa Mac, Linux, and even of course sa Windows. In summary, kung gusto mong mag-develop ng application and then maging available siya sa Android and iOS, kailangan marunong kang mag-Catlin or Java or Swift or Object-C. And then of course, yung gagamitin mong computer, kailangan nakaredy din. Dahil hindi ka lang sa Windows magde-develop, pati sa Mac OS. Okay, now let's proceed to the benefits of uh, developing native mobile application. Number one, we have familiar look and feel. Facebook app is available on Android and as well as iOS. Kapag ka ginagamit natin yung application na yun, and then we compare it, based on user interface pa lang, malalaman mo na kung nasan dito yung Android, and then nasan dito yung iOS. It is because of their native look and feel. Kasi mostly sa mga IDE na gagamitin mo, provided na yung mga UI na ginagamit sa pang Android or pang iOS. Better performance and more security will going to refrain that because we will going to discuss first the hybrid mobile application. Sunod na muna natin si web-based or web apps. Ang mga web apps ay ina-access via browsers. So we're in, magta-type tayo ng website natin or IP address sa address bar ng browser ng phone. And then, kung ano yung lalabas doon, yun yung kinukonsider natin as web apps. Uh, kailangan mo ng internet connection para mapagana yung mga web apps na ito. And then, basically, they are written in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or other web technologies. Depende kung kumukonect siya sa database. But if it is a static web apps lang, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript can do the work. So, kung iisipin natin, basically, yes, it is a website lang po. Or it is a responsive website na gumagana or compatible sa mga maliliit na 
device. Ang mga website natin before is uh, hindi naman siya talaga magandang tignan kapag ka sa mga maliliit na devices. Since nauso yung mga small devices, so kailangan mag-adapt ng mga website sa te new technology na nag-emerge katulad nga nitong smartphone. So ang ginawa nila, ano, instead of creating a native application, ginawa nilang responsive yung kanilang website para maging aesthetic hindi masira or magsabog-sabog yung content ng kanilang website kapag ka sa maliliit na screen na. And of course, as the technology emerge, nagkaroon tayo ng another na parang web-based or web apps din. Tinawag siyang progressive web apps or PWA. Sabi nga dito, it is a similar with web applications. So similar siya sa paggawa, similar siya dun sa may na gumagamit pa rin ng browsers para uh, para mapagana natin tong application na ito more superior and consider the future of the mobile web. So basically parang imagine na lang natin si web apps on a steroid. PWA can utilize JavaScript framework. For the benefits of using PWAs um, meron siyang native experience or kaya niyang i-emitate yung native experience na meron dun sa mga native application. It is because of the usage or the utilization of JavaScript frameworks. It can also use as uh, offline mode but not totally offline mode. So let's say for example sa web apps natin, yung number 2, kapag ka, um, nagbabrowse ka sa web and then naw nawalan ka ng internet connection, so, lalabas yung dinosaur, yung T-Rex, no internet connection. And then, hindi, ka na hindi mo na makikita yung user interface. Hindi mo na makikita yung website. But in PWA, whenever that you go offline, and then, nakapag-load ka ng mga iilan na pages on their website, pwede mo pa siyang ma-access kasi nasa-save yun sa cache or memory ng phone na ginagamit mo. And then also, ang mga PWAs and web application ay hindi na gumagamit ng mga distribution platform. Kung baga, hindi na sila ina-upload kasi wala naman silang installer. Hindi naman sila nakoconvert into APK unlike native and hybrid. So meaning to say, they are distribution platform free. Hindi mo sila makikita sa marketplace ng cellphone mo. And lastly, we have crossbreed or yung tinatawag natin na hybrid apps. It is a combination of web apps and native app technology. That's why tinawag siyang hybrid. So, ginagamit natin yung web technologies like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then frameworks para ma-adapt yung itsura, look and feel ng native app technology. Ayan. So, and then of course, we're going to use Ionic in this course. Furthermore, uh, crossbreed or hybrid apps can access native features ng mga cellphone natin, yung mga hardware devices natin like touch ID, camera, buttons like home, power, volume up, volume down. So, pwede natin kontrolin yon sa hybrid na hindi kayang kontrolin when you are using web apps. And of course, given yun na makokontrol mo yung mga hardware na ito whenever that you are going to develop a native application. By the way, there are a lot of frameworks na po pwede nating gamitin alternative to Ionic. But again, in this course, mag-focus tayo dito kay Ionic. So, si Ionic, gumagamit siya ng uh, web view para ma-load si JavaScript, HTML, and CSS sa mobile phones po natin. So basically, parang ang nangyayari dito is naka full screen and then hindi na tayo kailangan mag-type ng web address or website or IP address and of course, hindi na tayo kailangan gumamit ng uh, browsers kapag ka naka-hybrid mobile application na tayo. So the benefits of using hybrid mobile application, you can enhance the user experience and as well as the user interface. Since gumagamit tayo ng HTML, CSS, and different kinds of JavaScript framework, marami tayong customization na magagawa. And with that, mas may enhance nga natin yung user experience and user interface. With hybrid, you can have a shorter development time. 
let's say for example, you're going to develop an application and your client wants to put that application on both operating system, iOS, and then Android. Kung magne-native ka, again, based dun sa discussion natin kanina, kailangan mo at least two programming language na alam. One for iOS and one for Android. Which results sa mahabang development time. Of course, kung ikaw lang yung gagawa ng application na yun. But when you're using hybrid mobile application, meron siyang tinatawag na single code base. Ang ibig sabihin nito kung ano yung gagamitin mong code for Android, po pwede mo din gamitin kay iOS and as well as sa mga PWA or even sa mga Windows phone. Even madaming benefits and advantages ang paggamit ng hybrid, meron din mga drawbacks pagdating sa paggamit nito. Number one is yung less performance. So ito na yung i -re natin kanina dun sa my native regarding sa performance and security. So, less performance ang hybrid. It is because gumagamit pa siya ng web view. Not unlike sa native, kung ito yung code natin, right next to it is yung nagiging output po nito. Kung baga nagagamit na natin siya agad. Unlike dito sa hybrid, kailangan pa natin ng web view para magkaroon ng look and feel na katulad nung nasa native yung mga gawang hybrid application. Plug independent. Nasabi natin kanina na si Hybrid can access Touch ID, camera, and other hardware ng specific phone. Pero yun ay sa pamamagitan lamang ng plug-in. Meaning to say, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS cannot access the hardware standalone. And lastly, third-party dependent ang mga hybrid application sa mga frameworks. Meaning to say, kapag tumigil ang update, ni Ionic or particularly kung ano yung mapipili nating specific framework, maapektuhan yung ginagawa natin na application. Ganon din sa security. Let's say for example, si Ionic nagkaroon ng security issue. Since nakadepende tayo sa framework na yon, maapektuhan din of course yung ating application. Alright, that's the end of the lesson 1, concept of mobile application demystified. Thank you.